What is going on you guys? It's a girl Diana back at you with another YouTube video. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has been out for a few weeks now and I'm officially in the post game. And recently the entire Pokemon community has been buzzing about the highly anticipated upcoming DLC. And people have been throwing around all kinds of theories on how it's gonna be connected to regions that we've already seen in the past. But what I wanna talk about today is what I specifically want as a player to be included in the upcoming DLC. So if you're interested in hearing my opinions on what I think should be added in the upcoming DLC, then just keep on watching. And if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe because it helps you grow out and give this video a thumbs up if you are a Pokemon fan so that we can push it out into the YouTube algorithm so that more Pokemon fans can see it. And if you would like another way to support the channel, please feel free to check out the merch store. There is a link down below in the description that takes you to not only my merch store, but also all of my other socials so you can keep what I'm doing on a daily basis. I've also linked copies of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below as well if you're still looking for your own copy. But let's go ahead and hop into what I think should be added into the DLC. Bye. 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 So one thing that I think needs to be added into the DLC that I'm pretty sure the entire community would also agree with is the fact that we need more clothing options for our characters. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they gave us a ton of different customization options when it came to hair color, eye color, eyelashes, literally the works. But when it comes to clothing, we only have four options to choose from. We have our spring uniform, our summer uniform, our fall uniform, and our winter uniform. And yes, you can go ahead and accessorize by buying different color socks, shoes, bags, hats, and gloves, but the base of your outfit stays the same. You're basically just able to add accessories to your already existing uniform. And I think that although they took some great steps forward by giving us so many options when it comes to customizing the way our character looks, being able to dress your character the way that you would like it to look is also part of expressing your individualism. And I think that by limiting us to just the school uniforms, it doesn't allow people to be as creative as they would like. And I think that this is something that they did very well in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Since in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there may have not been as many customizations when it came to your character's face or hair, but when it came to clothing options, we had a plethora. And people love that they were able to show off their fashion sense through their characters. Me, for example, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, I took the liberty of dressing the character the way that I would dress in real life. And since I'm not really able to customize my character like that in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I almost feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect for me when it comes to actually feeling like I'm playing as myself in the game. So if we are able to customize our characters more in the DLC, I think that that would be a huge hit with the entire fan base. The next thing that I think they should add in the DLC is a lot more Pokemon. Currently, the Paldean Pokedex has 400 Pokemon that naturally spawn in the Paldea region. And once we're able to transfer some of our old Pokemon from Pokemon Home to the actual game in early 2023, that's only going to be adding around 100 new Pokemon. And keep in mind, these are transfer only. So these are not going to be actively spawning in the actual region. So much like they did in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where they added 200 new Pokemon that actually spawned in the region, I think that they should follow in the same footsteps here in Scarlet and Violet. With the transfer only Pokemon, we are seeing the return of a lot of fan favorites, including Greninja, which we have not seen in quite some time. However, like I said, a lot of these fan favorites are transfer only. So if you don't already have this Pokemon or you just don't have Pokemon home, you will not be able to actually have these Pokemon in game. So since some people may not have had the earlier games and are unable to get some of the transfer only Pokemon in their own game, to make up for that, it would only seem fair that we added more Pokemon that would actually spawn in the wild for other people to catch. I realize that we're never going to get a full dex ever again, just because there is so many Pokemon and that it would be way too crazy to get over a thousand Pokemon in one game. But I think at bare minimum, they should follow the steps of Pokemon Sword and Shield and add at minimum 200 more. Another thing that I would like to see in the DLC is something similar to the Dynamax adventures that we got in the Sword and Shield DLC. And the reason for that is that currently, in order to change your Pokemon's Terra type, it takes 50 Terra Shards of that specific type in order to change your Pokemon's Terra type. However, Terra Shards are a very rare drop. And the only two reliable ways to obtain these items are by doing multiple raids of that same Terra type or by finding them in Pokeball items. And even so, by finding them in either Pokeball items or getting them from raids, you only get anywhere from two to three in raids. And in Pokeball items, you usually get one, which means you'll have to invest quite a few hours in the game in order to achieve this for just one Pokemon. However, if they introduce something similar to Dynamax Adventures where you're able to do multiple raids in one go and collect items along the way, that may be able to improve the quality of life since you won't have to go to each individual raid den on your map. Which, if I'm being completely honest, can take quite a bit of time because you do have to fly there, you do have to travel to the raid, you have to enter the raid, beat the raid, and then you get your rewards. Whereas something like the Dynamax Adventures where you're able to knock them out a lot quicker would be able to speed up the process just a little bit. And the last last thing that I have been thinking about for quite some time that I would like for them to introduce in the DLC it might seem like a small and minute detail to most people, but I just want my Pokemon to follow me around. I know of course right now you're able to use the Let's Go feature which allows you to send out your Pokemon and engage in auto battles, and technically your Pokemon does follow you around for a little bit, but even if you run around too fast or you hop on your Legendary, your Pokemon automatically goes back in its ball, so your Pokemon doesn't always actively follow you around. 
And for me personally, that was one of my favorite things that they introduced in the Sword and Shield DLC is that I was able to walk around the area with my Pokemon. In my opinion, it lets me form more of a bond with my team, especially since in this game, Game Freak went the extra step and gave all of the Pokemon that are in the Paldea region their own little personalities, which is probably one of my favorite touches that they've done since I love walking around and seeing all the Pokemon in the overworld reacting to you battling another Pokemon or even interacting with you out in the wild. So I think that it would make the game just that much more special if we were able to walk with a Pokemon of our choosing without them going back into their Pokeball if we move around too fast. At least it would make it more special for me because I grow very attached to the Pokemon that follow me. There are other small details that I would love to see in the DLC as well. For example, having someone that can clear your Eevees instead of using fairies like they did in the Sword and Shield DLC, or maybe even adding a sparkle or a noise when it does come to shinies because I personally don't know what all the shinies look like, so I'm sure I've missed a lot of them. And some of them you just really can't tell. And other small details like that. But the things that I mentioned previously are the bigger picture things that I would love for them to include in the upcoming DLC. But of course, that's just my opinion and feel free to leave yours down below in the comments because I would actually love to hear what you guys want in the DLC. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.